catalytic hydrogenation and the Birch reduction are going to be the topics in this lesson. We're going to really quickly focus on a couple of reduction reactions that involve the pi electrons within the benzene ring, and they're pretty stable, so we've got a couple of rather unique reductions that are going to go on here. Now this lesson is part of my organic chemistry playlist, I'm releasing these lessons weekly throughout the school year, so if you want to be notified when I post a new one, subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification. All right, so let's take a look at catalytic hydrogenation for a second real quick. And uh, so here I've kind of set this up uh, just like it shows up on your study guide here, except I haven't filled in the blanks here. And so if we try to do, you know, classic catalytic hydrogenation with benzene like we would for an alkene or alkyne, we're going to find that we just don't get a reaction. So NR here stands for no reaction. And the key is that the pi electrons here are much more stable than an alkene or alkyne when they're in an aromatic ring. And so uh, under classic conditions, this just isn't going to work. So however, if we make the conditions a little harsher here, so if we take our hydrogen and we jack up the pressure, and you'll see this expressed usually one of a couple of different ways. So in this case, either 100 atmospheres or 1500 pounds per square inch PSI. You'll see it usually given in one of those two units, depending on the textbook and stuff like this. So, and then we'll use a nickel catalyst typically, and we'll jack up the temperature just a little bit. And in this case, we can actually reduce all the pi electrons and reduce benzene just to plain old cyclohexane. So, but rather harsh conditions. So, and most textbooks make kind of a note of this distinction here. So if you do the normal catalytic hydrogenation with benzene, nothing. So, but harsh conditions, 100 atmospheres, 1500 PSI, 150 degrees Celsius, that's when you can full reduction of all the pi electrons down to cyclohexane. Okay. So birch reduction is the second one we wanna talk about here. And so this one might get a little more press in certain classes. And like I said, though, some of you may not even see this in your course. So it's really up to uh, what you're covering in your curriculum. So, but I'd, I'd say estimate about half of OCHEM classes will cover this in the undergraduate curriculum. So uh, the birch reduction here. So if we take a look, uh, we're using sodium metal in methanol with ammonia. And you can see here that we start off with three pi bonds or six pi electrons, really. We only end up with four pi electrons. We're going with something that's aromatic to something that's non-aromatic. It's got two sp3 carbons in here. So, and as long as you don't have any substituents, it's not hard to predict what the product's gonna look like. And so we wanna take a look at something real quick, and that's the intermediate. And if you've got the study guide, it's already kind of written there for you. So if we take a look at what this looks like, we got a radical anion intermediate along the way here. And the mechanism itself is not the most important thing. Most of you aren't going to be on the hook for any sort of mechanism, even if it's covered in your, even if this reaction is covered in your class, you're probably not going to cover the mechanism. So, but it is interesting to note this lovely intermediate, this radical anion. So in being an anion, it's electron rich. And if we want to stabilize that thing, we need electron withdrawing groups. So, and if we want to destabilize this intermediate, we want electron donating groups. And so it depends if you've got an electron withdrawing group like we do here, or an electron donating group like we do here. So where this reaction is actually going to take place, where the reduction will actually take place, uh, uh, will be impacted by those groups. Because again, if I've got a, an anion in a key location where reduction is taking place, that's one of the two carbons where reduction took place. So if that's where the anion is, then to stabilize it, that's where I'd want to have the electron withdrawing group. And so in this case, if we do this with the nitro group, So then reduction takes place immediately adjacent to the nitro group. Whereas if you do this with a donating group like hydroxyl group here, it's the exact opposite. And so now where the reduction takes place is not immediately adjacent to the donating group because that would destabilize the anion intermediate. And so that's kind of the big thing to remember here is depending on if you've got an electron withdrawing group versus an electron donating group. So the reduction takes place adjacent to withdrawing groups, but not to donating groups, all based on whether they stabilize or destabilize this radical anion intermediate. Cool, this lesson was just short and sweet. We're gonna deal with a lot of side chain reactions in the next lesson. So side chain oxidations and different things of that sort. And there's quite a few of them, but this didn't really fit into that lesson. So I kind of gave it its own separate one here instead. 
Now, if you found this lesson helpful, would you consider giving me a like and a share? A couple of the best things you can do to make sure that other students get to see this lesson as well. If you're looking for the study guide that goes with this, if you're looking for practice problems on uh, you know, reactions of aromatic compounds, if you're looking for a final exam rapid review or a practice final exams for your OCHEM class, check out my premium course at chadsprep.com.